Hello and welcome to the eighth week of season 20, Season of Defiance, starting on April 18th, 2023. So for week eight, let's have a look at our legacy rotation, starting with the Forsaken expansion. Ready if you are. Let's see what's out there. The Dreaming City this week is at a weak curse level, which means Petrovenge can be found in the Strand and has the Broken Courier mission for the next week. The Blindwell features Scorn enemies and the Plagues, Sycorus and Vericus. The Ascendant challenge this week will be the Forfeit Shrine, which can be located over in the Guardians of Hacilia on the Dreaming City. Next up, the Shadowkeep expansion. On the moon, the weekly story mission is Beyond. The Trove Guardian is located in Archer's Line. The Wandering Nightmare is the Nightmare of Hawkus in the Anchor of Light. And the Nightmare Hunts this week will be Fogoth Fear, Ghoul, Rage, and Tanix Isolation. For our Beyond Light expansion, on Europa this week, Critics the Dark Priestess will be the Empire Hunt, Eventide Runes will be the Eclipse Zone, and the Exo Challenge will be Survival. For the 30th Anniversary expansion, we have the Loot Rotation for Dares of Eternity, which will be on Week 4's rotation with the Scatterhorn armor set and the Pathfinder armor set being available. The weapons available this week will be the Stasis Precision Frame Shotgun, Vactathis, the Solar High Impact Frame Auto Rifle, Kraju Amilo, the Stasis Precision Frame Hand Cannon, Volpicula, the Arc Precision Frame Bow, Wolf Tone Draw, the Solar High Impact Frame Fusion Rifle, Iotona Draconis, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Canis Major, the Arc Vice Rapid Fire Frame Scout Rifle, Contingency Plan, the Kinetic High Impact Frame Pulse Rifle, Legal Action 2, the Solar Rapid Fire Frame Heavy Grenade Launcher, Outrageous Fortune, the Void Adaptive Frame Sword, Steel Syllabus C14, and the Kinetic Lightweight Frame Sidearm, spoiler alert. For the Witch Queen expansion, the Witch Queen weekly story mission is The Arrival, where the modifiers are Scorched Earth and Fire Pit, as well as Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. Also this week you will have Altars of Reflection Insight and Altars of Reflection Catalyst. The Wellspring activity has been updated to include a featured Throne World weapon, Veritas Armor, and a weapon pattern as its rewards. For the Lightful expansion, the weekly mission is Breakneck, with extra shields, locked loadouts, and extra champions, barrier, overload, and unstoppable champions, void threat, pestilence, kinetic overcharge, strand and solar surges, with overcharge rocket launchers. The partition mission will be Backdoor, with barrier and overload champions, void threat, void and solar shields, with void and strand surges. And the Vex Incursion this week will be Zephyr's Concourse. In addition, the weekly Lightfall reset also refreshes the pinnacle drop for the Node Override Avalon Exotic mission on the EDZ. Raids and Dungeons The new Root of Nightmares raid challenge this week is the fourth encounter, Nezerat, called All Hands. And as this is a new raid challenge, details on how to complete this challenge will become available once it has been completed. The King's Fall raid challenge this week is the first encounter, Totems, called the grass is always greener. Players cannot take the same brand type twice in a row. The Vow the Disciple challenge this week is the first encounter, Acquisition, called Swift Destruction, where Guardians must kill all champions within a few seconds of each other on all rounds. The Vault of Glass challenge this week is the second encounter, Oracles, called The Only Oracle for You. Players cannot destroy the same Oracle more than once. The Deepstone Crypt challenge this week is the third encounter, Tanix Part 1, called Of All Trades. Guardians must perform each role at least once, Operator, Scanner and Suppressor. And the Last Wish challenge this week is the first encounter, Kali, called Summoning Ritual. Players must activate and cleanse all 9 plates, then kill all 9 knights and ogres before damaging Kali. Your pinnacle raid will be the Garden of Salvation on the moon, which means all challenges will be available for each encounter. These are the first encounter, Embrace, called To the Top. This is where you must not kill the Cyclops that spawns near the Consecrated Mind. The second encounter, Spire Defense, called A Link to the Chain. This is where all Guardians must receive the Enlightened buff at the same time. The third encounter, Consecrated Mine, called Staying Alive, where you must not kill the spawning Cyclopses in the first two rooms. And the fourth encounter, Sanctified Mind, called Zero to One Hundred, where you must fully fill each Conflict with 30 moats within 10 seconds of initially banking the first set of moats. 
Also, with the Garden of Salvation being the featured raid, this does mean that you might be able to find a team to guide you through the final part of the Divine Fragment quest and raid puzzles to collect the exotic trace rifle, Divinity. And the pinnacle dungeon for this week will be the duality over on the derelict leviathan on the moon. Next up, challenges. So for week 8 we have size defying. Defeat 25 champions or bosses in defiant battlegrounds playlist. Bonus progress awarded for those defeated on legend difficulty for challenge xp plus. Relentless liberator. Gain bonus rewards using defiant keys at the end of defiant battlegrounds playlist activities on both normal and legend difficulty. Defiant keys can be earned by completing Lightfall Complain missions, Terminal Overload in Neomunera, Raids, Vanguard Op playlist activities, Gambit matches, and Crucible matches for Challenge XP++. Trial by Firing Squad. Win multiple rounds in Trials of Osiris for Challenge XP++++, Bright Dust, and a Trials Weapon. Defiant Gambit Ornament. Acquire the Gambit Ornament for the Ecliptic Distaff for Challenge XP++++ and Bright Dust. Defiant Calibration. Calibrate Swords, Bows and Glaives. Bonus progress for defeating Guardians for Challenge XP++ and Bright Dust. And one classified challenge, so keep it secret, keep it safe. And speaking of Bright Dust, we have our 8th Eververse of the season for the week of April 18th, 2023. Available this week for Bright Dust, we have the Quick Cardio Legendary Emote for 700 Bright Dust. The Lucid Dream Exotic Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust. The Lattice Entrance Legendary Transmat Effect for 450 Bright Dust. The Time Honored Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust. The Grey Scale Undergrowth Legendary Shader for 300 Bright Dust. The Touch Grass Exotic Emote for 3,250 Bright Dust. The Limitless Subversion Vest Ornament for the Hunters. The Cognant Beat Plate Ornament for the Titans and the Technologic Robes Ornament for the Warlocks, each for 1,200 Bright Dust. The Sweeper Shell Exotic Ghost Shell for 2,850 Bright Dust. The Sweeper Simulant Exotic Sparrow for 2,500 Bright Dust. The Gilded Prowler Exotic Ship for 2,000 Bright Dust. The Whaler's Whim Exotic Weapon Ornament for the Exotic Bow Wish Ender for 1,250 Bright Dust. And finally, the Side Eye Projection Legendary Ghost Projection for 1,500 Bright Dust. As a reminder, your daily loss sector will show you a flag outside which will give you details of threats, shields, champions and exotic armour you will find inside. But if you are new to the game or you are using an alternate character and can't find the flag outside, you will have to run through the loss sector normally to have it show up on your map as a legend slash master. Which you can either do solo or with a fire team, where you will only be able to earn a chance at the exotic drop when completing solo. Tuesday, April 18th will be the quarry on the EDC for exotic helmets, void threat, solar and strand surges with void and solar elemental shields, overcharge grenade launcher with barrier and unstoppable champions. Wednesday, April 19th will be the affiliates rest on the dreamy city for exotic boots, stasis threat, solar and strand surges with void elemental shields, overcharge shotgun with unstoppable and overload champions. Thursday, April 20th will be the chamber of starlight on the dreamy city for exotic gauntlets, Solar Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void and Solar Elemental Shields, Overcharged Swords with Unstoppable and Overload Champions. Friday April 21st will be the Perdition on Europa for Exotic Chests, Arc Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void and Arc Elemental Shields, Overcharged Fusion Rifle with Barrier and Overload Champions. Saturday April 22nd will be Bunker E15 on Europa for Exotic Helmets, Void Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void Elemental Shields, Overcharged Grenade Launcher with Barrier and Overload Champions. Sunday April 23rd will be the Confluxes on Nessus for Exotic Boots, Solar Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void Elemental Shields, Overcharged Trace Rifles with Barrier and Unstoppable Champions. And finally back round to Monday April 24th will be the Thriller Drome on Neptune for Exotic Gauntlets, Void Threat, Void and Strand Surges with Void and Arc Elemental Shields, Overcharged Grenade Launcher with Barrier and Overload Champions. Lead the way. And Grand Master Nightfalls have returned. Which means if you already have your Conqueror Seal, you will be able to select whichever Grand Master Nightfall you want in any order to gild your title. And with that, our 8th featured Nightfall will see us face off against the Darkblade Kelgroth in the High Spoutgrounds Mars, where you have a chance to get a Pinnacle Engram if you complete the Nightfall with a score of 200k or more. This Nightfall is free to play. You will be able to earn high end gear for your characters, including the Nightfall featured weapon, exotic gear, enhancement cores, 
enhancement prisms and ascendant shards. The higher the Nightfall difficulty, the more common the drop will be, with the featured weapon and exotic gear being uncommon at Hero difficulty, to being common with Ascendant Shards in Grand Masters. Legend and Low Nightfalls will have 5 Barrier and 6 Unstoppable Champions, with 40% Solar, 40% Arc and 20% Void. Masters and GMs will have 8 Barrier and 9 Unstoppable, with 40% Solar, 40% Arc and 20% Void Shields. Your Nightfall modifiers are Hero Difficulty, Maximum Effective Level 1765, Matchmaking is available, Enemies have Extra Shields, Champions Foe, you will face Barrier and Unstoppable Champions, you can either use Intrinsic Exotics, use the Subclass Debuff, or unlock Anti-Champion mods from the Seasonal Artifact. Solar Elemental Threat, 25% increase to Solar Incoming Damage, Empath, Enhanced Radar, take increased damage from melee, Overcharge Weapons, Weapons overcharged from the Seasonal Artifact are active in this activity. Kinetic weapons do increase damage when your subclass element matches an active surge. Void Surge, 25% bonus to outgoing void damage. Strand Surge, 25% bonus to outgoing strand damage. Overcharged weapon, 25% bonus damage with machine guns. Galvanized, combatants have more health and are more difficult to stun. Legend difficulty, maximum effective level 1815, includes all previous modifiers except Galvanized. No matchmaking. Equipment locked. You will be unable to change your equipment once the mission starts. Master difficulty. Maximum effective level 1820. Includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Champions mob. This difficulty adds more champion enemies. Chafe. Radar is disabled. And Grand Master difficulties. Maximum effective level 1815. Includes all previous modifiers except galvanized. Join in progress is disabled. Extinguished, if your fire team falls in a restricted zone, your team is returned to orbit. Limited revives, gain additional revives by defeating champions, up to a maximum of 20. Contest mode, which caps your power level to make enemies more of a challenge. And fire pit, when defeated, acolytes spawn fireballs that cause damage over time. To combat champions this season, you have access to subclass counters as well as a choice of intrinsic anti-champion artifact mods, which are anti-barrier pulse and anti-barrier sidearm. Unstoppable Scout Rifle and a Medieval Champion where Glaives fire projectiles that stun unstoppable champions Swords stun overload champions on consecutive hits You also have exotic weapons and armor that can help with intrinsic mods as well For Anti-Barrier, the Kinetic Bow Wishender The Kinetic Linear Fusion Rifle Arbalest The new Kinetic Pulse Rifle Revision Zero The Solar Energy Hand Cannon Ariana's Vow The Solar Heavy Sword The Lament and the Titan Exotic Gauntlet's Second Chance, which gain a second charge of your shield throw melee, which becomes shield piercing and suns barrier champions. For Unstoppable, the Kinetic Fusion Rifle Bastion, the Kinetic Hand Cannon Malfeasance, the Solar Energy Sidearm Devil's Ruin, the Void Heavy Bow Leviathan's Breath, and the Hunter Gauntlet's Athras's Embrace, which have a chance to stun Unstoppable champions with their empowered weighted knife. The Nightfall featured weapon to obtain this week and final time to acquire it before it's taken out of the Nightfall loot rotation will be the solo aggressive frame shotgun, Mindbender's Ambition. The Mindbender's Ambition has a base impact of 80, base range of 29 and stability of 29. It can roll with auto loading holster, moving target and quick draw, with pulse monitor, snapshot sights and slide shot. It has the origin trait of stunning recovery, where if you stun a champion it partially refills the magazine, triggers health regen and improves your recovery for a short duration. And Vanguard Vindication, where final blows with this weapon grant a small amount of health. Next up, Lord Shaxx brings Momentum Control to the featured Crucible playlist for the 8th week of the season. Momentum Control is a 6v6 PvP mode which is a variation on the regular control mode, where every weapon is significantly higher in lethality, meaning that you can take out your opponents much faster than normal. Respawns are instant, and defeating enemy players in momentum control will grant faster regeneration on your melee, grenade, and super. Players get increased damage resistance when they activate a super, to help counteract that little bit of extra damage that the guns give out. The mode also has increased capture speeds on points, and radar is removed for every player. Achieve victory by capturing zones and defeating opponents. Delightful! Making its way into the Crucible Labs this week should be Countdown Rush. Countdown is a reprise of the classic Destiny 2 elimination mode originally featured in the Trials of the Nine. In Countdown, two teams go head to head in a single life battle for control of two Cabal Charges. The Cabal Charges on the map serve as a focal point to force combat and exist as a team based solution to the stalemate gameplay that exists in standard elimination. 
Once the charge is armed via interaction, it begins ticking down its fuse, and defenders have 35 seconds to defuse the charge before it detonates. Attackers arm one of two sites and defend the charge until it detonates. Defenders defend both charges from being armed, defuse any active charges, and hold off attacks to win rounds. Countdown Rush is a twist on the standard countdown experience, featuring multiple Cabal charges per round. Players can respawn after 7 seconds and can be resurrected immediately by another player. When a charge exits play via detonation or defusal, the other unarmed charge reactivates and is available to be armed. Once both charges are out of play and the round ends and the sides swap. Players earn points via detonation, defusal and defence. In a defensive win, the defending team is awarded points per site defended, meaning if both charges were up, they would get 2 points versus 1 if only one charge were armed. The first to win 4 rounds wins. Also by participating in Crucible Labs, you are rewarded with increased Crucible XP. That is amazing. And dependable as always, Saint 14 will be back on Friday at reset to bring you another weekend of fun in the Trials of Osiris. As a reminder, Trials of Osiris is a 3v3 PvP high stakes variant of elimination. Only available from Friday reset until Tuesday weekly reset, Trials gives every player the chance to show off their PvP skills to obtain some of Destiny's most sought after weapons and armour. Players that compete in Trials of Osiris will have all of their games tracked through a passage card, a ticket purchased from Saint 14 in the lower hangar of the tower. Winning rounds and matches in Trials will grant exclusive weapons, armour, pinnacle gear, masterwork materials and even adept gear for the most skilled players who can reach the lighthouse with a flawless ticket of 7 games won and no losses. 5 round wins will bag you that match for your passage card. By competing in Trials you do have a chance to pick up 2 pinnacle engrams from playing each week, one from 50 round wins and the other from winning 7 games. These do not have to be done all in one go but you do have to complete them before the weekly reset. Before we go, if you've enjoyed this content and found it most informative, then please hit that subscribe button and check out our show over at twotitansandahunter.com. We would be greatly appreciative. But before you go, we just want to remind you that this will be the last week to farm the Nightfalls and Grandmasters to obtain your Mindbender's Ambition shotgun before it's taken out of the rotation. And that there will be double XP in the Crucible this week. So if you want to fast track and get that new ritual weapon the Ecliptic Distaff Glaive and a Crucible ornament, the Vermeil Spindle, then this will be a good week to boost those ranks. And that's it for the 8th week of Seasonal Defiance. Go be defiant, Guardians. Allons-y! Guardian down!